Uh, in, about a month ago, I met Walter Hooper for the first time. Walter Hooper was uh, Lewis's friend and, and last secretary. He um, is still alive, living in Oxford in the UK. Um, Lewis was uh, from Northern Ireland. Uh, he was raised uh, in a fairly secular home, became a Christian reluctantly. I'm the most uh, reluctant uh, convert in, in all of England, I think he said, when he became a Christian. Uh, he was a member of the Church of England, not sure if he could be today. He did uh, predict some of the problems of modernism and relativism. Uh, his book, Mere Christianity, Screwtape Letters, is just a tremendous introduction to the Christian faith. His Narnia novels, one of the finest, if not the finest, modern Christian apologist. What do you think of the two movies? Uh, not bad. I thought the Lord of the Rings movies were better in terms of what they were supposed to be. Uh, the first movie... Uh, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe? Yeah. It, it, too much about the children, not enough about uh, God, and that's what the book is about. The second movie was probably better uh, as a piece of work. I don't want to be too hard on them, because if they bring people to reading C.S. Lewis, great achievement. Yeah. But uh, I would have, if I ha had that ability, I think I would have made a slightly different movie. Now, now Lewis had uh, more than a, uh, a passing friendship with J.R. Tolkien. They're very close. They're very close. Mm. They used to meet together and read to each other when they were writing. Um, what, what do you think of Tolkien? Is, is he of a similar stature, greater stature, lesser stature than Lewis in your mind? As a writer, um, I think they're very similar. It's interesting that Tolkien was not a fan of The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. He said to Lewis, you can't mix mythology. Uh, I, I, equal. They were both very fine men. They were very close friends. Their friendship broke a little, partly over uh, Lewis's marriage. He married a woman who was, um, was difficult, particularly for Tolkien and for Tolkien's wife. But uh, in terms of my life, uh, Lewis has been more influential, but Tolkien is a man I, I, I love as, as much as Lewis, I think. And then, uh, I mean, there's others we could talk about, but I, I'm, I'm interested in, in uh, your interest in Conan Doyle. Well, uh, I wrote a biography of Arthur Conan Doyle. It's not one of my better books, I've got to, uh, I have to say. It, it's a, 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 work, a workman-like biography. But Sherlock Holmes is, is still a fascinating character, and Conan Doyle as a person is... is is quite compelling because he was always in search of faith. He left his Catholic faith behind, but he went to spiritualism. And, and it's, it's rather like New Age today. Um, I think it's wonderful when people embrace New Age. They're absolutely wrong, but it means they're not indifferent anymore. And they can't stay there for long because New Age is so vacuous. Eventually they'll look to something more important, and it's generally Christianity. Now you mentioned the Catholic faith. Catholic, of course, means universal. You're referring to the Roman Catholic faith, mm. right? You're a Roman Catholic. Well, you want to be a sectarian now, yeah, do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been a Roman Catholic all, uh, all your Christian life? No, uh, I was baptized as a Catholic in 1985, mm -hmm. but I left the church for oh, about a seven, eight year period in the, uh, in the 90s. Why? Um, the, the church in Canada, in, well, me, my, my weakness, my failing, but the church in Canada was rather a shock to me. I'd known the church in Britain and I saw a very different church here that had lost, um, no, the church hadn't lost. Many Catholics seemed to be more interested in their view of social justice, which tended to be the Sandinistas, <laughs> than with, with faith. And I saw such a purity of faith in the evangelical church, and I love it very much. But I did eventually come back to the Roman Catholic Church Why? about six years ago. For me, the sacraments were a ladder to him, not an obstacle to him. I was still convinced by the arguments of papal authority and the keys of Peter and, and the line of the papacy. Um, and I do believe in the literal truth of this is my body, this is my blood. Mm. And uh, so I'm not sure if all Catholics believe that, but they should if they really are Catholic. And the inability of me to, to, to on my knees, accept him in, in such a manner at Mass uh, was too much to tolerate, so I returned to, to the Catholic Church. But I, I'd be eternally grateful for what the Evangelical Church taught me about Scripture, about the Bible, about faith and love and sacrifice. And um, those years, I know there are people who are disappointed, they wish I'd stayed in the Evangelical Church, but I couldn't do that. Uh, I suppose in many ways I still regard myself as an Evangelical, but I am part of the, of the Roman Catholic. I've met a number of evangelical Roman Catholics. I mean, the, the two are not necessarily uh, mutually exclusive. No, and charismatic, there's a large yeah. charismatic Catholic movement. Thousands of people every year attend rallies in Toronto. That, that's thriving. You know, I, when I was pastoring in Jerusalem, Israel years ago, um, David Duplessis called me up uh, asking if he could come and see me. I said, of course. Uh, he had just come from meeting with Pope John Paul in the Vatican. And the Pope, and this would be back in 1987, the Pope had told him at that point in time they'd done a census and discovered there were at that point 55 million charismatic Roman Catholics mm. in the world. And uh, he was crediting Duplessis with all of that. And Duplessis really? modestly was saying, no, 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 I may have played a role. But um, 
it's, it's, a, it's kind of in many ways a post-denominational world we're living in, and yet there is this Protestant Roman Catholic divide. Uh, do, you, do, you, do you feel that there is a gap there? Do you feel um, disenfranchised uh, as far as evangelicals are concerned? No, I, I think uh, most evangelicals I know um, still have regard and respect for me. There are some who don't, but I have to say it tends to be people who are more denominationally minded rather than Christ minded. What unites Catholics and evangelicals is enormous. What divides us from the culture is huge. The, the, the culture war, the great struggle at the moment, it is not between Protestant no. and Catholic. It is between those who worship Christ and love Jesus and the rest of the world, which is increasingly hostile and more empowered in being vicious and personal and, and, and violent towards those people who are Christ followers. So anyone who wants to obsess about certain doctrinal differences, I think he's really betraying Christ. I don't fully understand why there are these differences. I'm sure that that is not what is wanted uh, by God. But we're humans and we're fallen and we're broken. But we must concentrate on, we know God, his son, Jesus Christ, died for our sins through a relationship with him. We, we have salvation. That alone makes us freaks, eccentrics, lunatics to most of the world. Let's concentrate on that and not what we, we differ about. No. I, I'm impressed with the uh, range of guests that come to your program. They obviously respect you. Uh, they don't see you as uh, sectarian. They, they see you as fair, although you're hard-hitting, you're fair. Uh, you really have uh, managed to achieve kind of the sweet spot, I think, relationally with our secular world. Is this something that just uh, flows out of you naturally, or is this something you've intentionally worked at, at, at accomplishing? Uh, as kind of you, uh, and, and perceptive, I have worked hard at that, because um, uh, preaching to the converted, as it were, in, in both religious and secular terms, there, there's, a, there's a ceiling to that of how much will be achieved. There are some people who won't come on the TV show, but there aren't many. And I know there are some Christians, I mean, most of our audience is not Christian, but there are some Christians who say, why is it you have people who are very much on the left, who, who are gay, who are pro-abortion pro or whatever? We, we just have people on the show. And I never compromise an inch. And there are those who say, oh, he's, 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 he's not conciliatory enough. No, this is my position. You're welcome to, to, to state yours and we'll argue and disagree with respect, but I'm not, I'm not gonna compromise, this is my belief. Um, but so far, there are very few people who've said, I won't come back on. There are one or two, and they're always the same type of people. They're people who've bullied their way through politics, through activism, against those with whom they disagree. And suddenly, it's not the CBC anymore, they'll have people who will argue with them, and they don't like it. But they're very few. The vast majority, whatever their politics, will come back on and enjoy the show. These would be, what, fundamentalists of the left? Yeah. I mean, is there such a thing as a kind of a leftist fundamentalist? I mean, there is as, oh. as intolerant in their left perspective as some right people are intolerant oh, in their perspective. Very, very much. So good. I mean, the, the last guy I know of who said he wouldn't come back on the show, I'm not going to name him, but he's a student leader who has been instrumental in banning pro-life clubs at the university. Um, who has the most extreme opinions, but didn't like the, um, the confrontational nature of the show. What he meant was, I argued with him, I wouldn't let him get away with some of the stuff he would get away with on other stations. Are you fearless? No, I'm a terrible coward. I, I'm just too stupid to know better. <laughs> so so are, are, are you nervous before you go on air with some of these people with whom you know you're going to have a real culture war? No, no, no. There, there are people every day who go out there putting their lives on the line. Yeah. I just sit in front of a camera. No, oh. that's nothing to be nervous about. As you think back over how many years now with uh, your show? How many years? Has uh, it I think been? it's about 11 years. 11 almost, years? Yeah. As you think back, uh, give me a highlight or two. Oh, We've got two minutes. <laughs> I d you know, I, I could say the Prime Minister or the Leader of the Opposition or Benjamin Netanyahu or um, someone who sat there whose son had been murdered in the most graphic way and he told me the story and I was shaking and I felt I was going to just break down because you empathize and you identify. I thought of my son, there were similar ages at the time, and this poor little boy was being driven by this mad killer past the house where he lived, and he apparently said to this man, that's where I live. And when the father gave that statement, I, and even now I feel the shiver go, go through mm -hmm. me, <clears throat> the killer was later killed himself in prison. And I said to the father, how did you feel? Thinking he would say, revenge. And he said, complete indifference. He was not part of my life and to have allowed him in would be to allow him to win again. And I always remember that interview. Politicians come and go, you know, uh, authors come and go, actors come and go. Um, 
Mind you, if you can get me David Beckham on the show, that would be pretty impressive. <laughs> <laughs> You're still an East Londoner, aren't you, at heart? Yeah, I suppose I am, really, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and you come across as uh, compassionate, thoughtful, a bit of a street fighter. <laughs> Uh, but uh, there's nobody who watches you, uh, as far as I know, who doesn't respect you. Uh, oh, thanks. Uh, and uh, you're doing a terrific job, Michael. Thank you very thanks much. Thanks for coming our way. It means a lot. Thank you.